the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, have you checked your fruit today? Have you checked your fruit today? Come on now. Have you checked your fruit today? We were talking about love. The last time we was talking, we were talking about love. Have you checked your fruit today? Have you checked your love today? And have you checked your joy today? You know, that's one of the things we need to go ahead and work on, right? And when we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, let's look at this. And this is the, the, uh, the fruits of the Spirit that I want to remind those baby who may be looking for the first time or those who have, you know, followed the series all the way through. It, it's in Galatians 5.22, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Temperance means self-control. Faith means faithfulness. Long-suffering means patience. Have you checked your fruit today? Have you looked at your life and lined these up? See, I'm not interested in how long you can read the Bible or how long you can pray. Is have you checked your fruit today in these areas? Because these are the areas that makes up a Christian. Huh? These are the areas that make up a Christian. Is the checking uh, the 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 characteristics of the Holy Spirit which means you're delivered from talking what we may perceive as a Christian talk. <laughs> I don't need you to, to worry about quoting scriptures. That's not what makes, God is not impressed with that. And I'm just trying to tell everybody, like I put in the video, I remember saying and saying it over and over again. He's not impressed with that. He's impressed with the character of the fruits of the spirit the Holy Spirit that is being manifested in your life. People need to see you when they walk into your presence. Are you bearing these fruits of the Spirit, the characteristics of the Holy Spirit? You know, one of the things we did when we last talked, we were talking about love. And one of the things is to make sure we cover this uh, scripture here. It says in 1 John 3, verse 21, Beloved, if our heart condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because he, because we keep his commandments and do the things which are pleasing in his sight. See, we don't want to be trying to please other people. We want to be pleasing in God's sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandments. And he that keepeth his commandments dwells in him and in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. So one thing I liked about that scripture, I wanted to make sure I covered that since I didn't cover that on the last one, is the fact is we have confidence in God, even if our heart condemns us. And see, that's one of the things that the world tries to do anyway, right? The world tried to condemn you. Even if you get to the point where you sit there and slip and miss not bearing these fruit, the world wants to condemn you. But you know, God is not interested in trying to condemn you. God is even trying to restore you. God is kind of trying to, to cultivate the fruits of the Spirit. That's what you're supposed to understand. Nobody's asking you to be perfect. All we ask you to do is allow the Holy Spirit to cultivate these characteristics in you, and yet there's people around you don't have that characteristics. The world doesn't always demonstrate those characteristics, and we keep expecting what the world was to give us. We expect the world to give us love. We expect the world to give us respect. We expect the world, and then we always get disappointed because we realize in the world, the world does not care about bearing fruit. So. We want to understand that we not, should not be man pleasers, but God pleasers. God is looking at your heart. God is looking at my heart. We are not supposed to be actors. We're supposed to believe and live this life 
according to those characteristics. When you receive Jesus Christ in your life, you're supposed to work on your love. You're supposed to work on your peace. And guess what? You work with him to get there. And you're not going to get there based on people. Because people love to sit there and check your fruit. And they, they don't even check their own fruit, but they, they quit checking yours. And you need to understand, stop worrying about people and they're checking your fruit. You check your fruit. That's why I say, have you check your fruit today? Because I don't care about, and you shouldn't care about other people trying to check your fruit. But most people try to test your fruit. Because they want to get you on it. They want to get you on the, the downside. They want to get you to, to, to fall and stumble and walk back. And because that's why they came with all these rules. So when you mess up the rules, then they can put you out and talk about you. But if you sit there and say, well, I'm just working on love, man. I'm working on love. I got a relationship with somebody. I'm working on love. Huh? I got joy. It comes from the fruits of the spirit. And God wants you to work on those fruits, those characteristics in your life daily. That's what it's all about, working on it daily. So one of the things you want to work on is joy. You want that joy. That's very important for us to have joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's what we talked about in the first round are the fruits of the Spirit. And now we want to make sure we focus on where our joy comes from. See, in the world, joy comes from based on the conditions, based on the, the environment you're in. But God is saying to say your joy comes based on Holy Spirit being in you. All right? Like I said, it's the fruits of the Spirit. It says right there, the, the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which is patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, which is faithfulness, meekness, tender with the self-control. against such, there is no law. Some people may not like us talking about the fruits of the Spirit, but I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says you need to bear fruit. So we're going to focus on that. Amen? In Psalms 30, verse 1, this is a song of David at the dedication of the house of David. He says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foe to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. And give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endures but a moment. And his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night. But joy comes in the morning. Knowing that he's faithful. Amen. In my posterity. I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, my favor, thou hast made my mountains to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried unto thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall they declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into what? Dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Huh? Joy comes in the morning when we recognize that though everything else may uh, leave you, forsake you, he's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. That's joy. If one of my loved ones goes on and, 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 and leaves this world and, and then pass on to the next world, we know that God is there for them. He's going to bring them. He's going to comfort them. You know what? Because you can't. And then some of us sit there and then some people mad at God because somebody made a lie and said that the Lord took them. No, they took them and the Lord received them. Life does those things, but the glory is 
that we'll see our loved ones again. Amen. So if you listen to this and you got angry with God because you 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 just at your whip's end, just remember this: joy comes in the morning, and knowing that He is with us. He got our back. Have you checked your fruit today? Do you know that the joy of the Lord is your strength? Your strength. That's where it's supposed to come from. That's where you look. Look for the inside for joy. Look for the inside for love. And all the other characteristics of the Holy Spirit. But joy comes in the morning. Trust in him. He's your strength. He'll make us, he'll get us through the next day and the next day. Yes, we will make mistakes. Yes, we will fall sometimes. But guess what? He is there always to pick us up and get us back on track. Have you checked your food today? Amen. I think you can do a good job doing that. Hey, you have a nice one, and I'll catch you on the next one. God bless. Bye-bye.